There's only one alliterative phrase that I like more than the Shiki Science Show, and that's anti-aging antibodies. Now, as it happens, one thing I spent a lot of time working on this year was antibodies. Now, while I cannot tell you yet what I was am doing, I can tell you about two recent science stories that exploit antibodies to extend mouse lifespan. Firstly, I'll bring your attention to this paper, Immunotherapy Targeting ISO-DGR Protein Damage Extends Lifespan, and then we'll talk about this paper that came out last month, in emission of interleukin-11 signaling extends mammalian health span. So let's just start by talking about antibodies. This is an antibody. The nice thing about antibodies is that they are specific. There are two main regions, a variable portion and a constant portion. The constant portion is important for the downstream response of antibodies, and they are unique to an individual, hence why it's called constant. The variable region is what binds an antigen, an antigen usually being a short protein sequence. Therefore, in a simplified sense, different proteins will be recognised by different antigens. Hence, the specificity can be achieved with antibodies. So what happens downstream of an antibody? Well, there are various different effects that could happen, one of which could be the recruitment and stimulation of the immune system, which recognises that constant portion. So for example, if a pathogen invades, we have antibodies that recognise the pathogen to trigger its clearance by the immune system. So essentially, these antibodies are recognising anything that looks foreign. Now, something that could be considered foreign is the accumulation of protein damage with age. And that damage is also something bad that the body should want to get rid of. So you could, in theory, use an antibody to deplete it. Now, keep that thought in your mind as we consider these two papers. So this first paper, Immunotherapy Targeting ISO-DGR Protein Damage Extends Lifespan in a Mouse Model of Protein Deamidation, The authors here conclude that these results indicate that immunotherapy targeting aging damaged proteins may represent effective interventions for a range of age-linked degenerative disorders. So that was a bit of a mouthful. So let's break it down. Firstly, what are they talking about? What is ISO-DGR? Well, this lab previously reported that damage occurs with age at the amino acid sequence, asparagine glycine arginine, such that it gets converted to the sequence isoaspartate glycine arginine. The DGR is just this single letter protein code that us biochemists like to use. The point being is that this peptide conversion is seen in various proteins and occurs spontaneously and accumulates with age. And this peptide conversion could impact the function and activity of the protein. Now, all is not too bad because there is an enzyme that can actually reverse this change back to the original state. The caveat, though, is that this enzyme is only found within cells. And we don't just have proteins within cells, we also have proteins outside the cells, such as the proteins making up the extracellular matrix, things like collagen. And so what they noticed in this paper was that there was an accumulation of damage in these extracellular proteins occurring with age. And what they showed in their previous paper was changes in the extracellular matrix proteins when they have this modification combine to integrins and promote immune cell activation. And so this was the starting point of the paper. Now, the one extra bit of information we need before we look at the most recent data is that mice that lack the enzyme, the one that converts this modification back, live shorter. So the idea was to give these mice an antibody against this ISO-DGR modification to see if they could recruit in the immune system to clear the damage. So what they did was give these short-lived mice strains, the ones without this enzyme, and they gave them one milligram per kilogram every week of this antibody against the ISO-DGR. And what they saw was that this effectively reduced the ISO-DGR protein levels, and also reduce the amount of pro-inflammatory cytokines, as well as extending the lifespan of the mice. 
So the authors hypothesize that this occurred by the antibody triggering cellular phagocytosis to remove the damaged ISODGR proteins. Importantly though, they didn't examine here the impact of wild type mice, which would have been quite nice to have seen, but maybe it's on its way. So this was interesting and became to me even more interesting when I saw that this second paper came out recently as well, whereby they show that inhibition of interleukin-11 signaling extends mammalian health span and lifespan. So here they administered anti-interleukin-11 to 75-week-old mice for 25 weeks, and that this improved metabolism and muscle function and reduced aging biomarkers and frailty across both male and female mice. And this matched with genetic studies whereby deletion of interleukin-11 also extended the lifespan of mice of both sexes. So in this paper, they were using antibodies that targeted interleukin-11. Now, interleukin-11 itself is kind of a bit of an enigma and an interesting protein, which seems to be positive feedback loop to sort of amplify inflammation, perhaps being a sort of upstream mediator of activating further inflammation production. Now, I'm not an expert in interleukin-11, but I have noticed from my own data sets and from others that this protein is increased in senescent cells. And so if you want to block inflammation, targeting upstream does seem like a logical thing to do, which is what they did. And so here they were using neutralizing antibodies. The idea is that by delivering an anti-interleukin-11 antibody, they could antagonize it from binding its downstream targets and causing this inflammation cascade. And it looks like it worked. I am showing you now the figures that show the lifespan extension, as I think that's the most compelling. The other point that's worth mentioning is here they have a lot of focus on the visceral white adipose tissue, where it seemed like anti-interleukin-11 treatment had the most benefits, in particular because they saw an increase in the uncoupling protein gene. So the authors conclude that this anti-interleukin-11 therapy is compelling because it has a reassuring safety profile and is currently in early stage clinical trials for fibroinflammatory diseases and is therefore potentially translatable for extending human health span and lifespan. Now, many people have already spoken about this paper online, so I'll just put a few links in the description. Some people are more optimistic than others. I would say simply that as an antibody treatment, you can play about with the amount of times you deliver the antibody, the dosing, the delivery. So in my opinion, is quite exciting. And combined with the, the previous paper I told you about really does again enforce the therapeutic value of having antibodies in part because they are so specific. So it's all about finding the right protein target. However, in both these cases, repeated dosing was required. And so I guess ultimately we want to find a way that simplify this treatment option. So all in all, and to wrap up what I said at the beginning of the video, this may make mankind's most meaningful medical milestone or not. I guess we'll see.